Some pretty big bombshells were dropped in the tech Twitter today by prominent leakers detailing how the consumer-oriented parts for Ampere are supposedly going to be made on Samsung's 10 nanometer. Now, at first, people may say this conflicts with previous rumors, but in fact, the lineup hasn't changed, and that giant, you know, over 100 SM part that we've been told about is supposedly still on 7 nanometer. So this doesn't really conflict Although I do have to say, I cannot personally confirm if this rumor is true or not. I don't have any sources able to verify it. And heck, the last thing I got that could be considered a source talking about in a video was like a secondhand thing I heard a year ago about how they were always planning to use 7 nanometer UV with Samsung. However, since a year ago, Samsung 7 nanometer has turned out to just not be up to snuff compared to TSMC's 7 nanometer nodes. And NVIDIA has been dropping tons of hints that they plan to source from both Samsung and TSMC. And that's because AMD has a lot of cloud at TSMC right now. And so I guess what I'll say is this, whether it's true or not, I kind of like this rumor. And it reminds me of something. That something is Maxwell. Maxwell was always planned to be on TSMC's 20 nanometer all the way into 2013. However, it became abundantly obvious that TSMC's 20 nanometer, like what was happening across the entire industry, was not keeping up with Moore's Law, and it just wouldn't be up to the performance levels NVIDIA needed. So they planned to skip it for 16 nanometer. But then they caught wind that AMD was in fact going to release another generation, and they realized that, I mean, if 20 nanometer's been delayed and is never going to work, how can we bet on... 16 nanometer anytime soon. So what NVIDIA did is ported Maxwell to 28 nanometer. And the decision to not wait for 16 nanometer, to spend the money porting some version of Maxwell to 28 nanometer with huge dies and launch early, proved to be one of the greatest decisions NVIDIA would ever make. Capturing them basically the overwhelming majority of the desktop and laptop gaming market. And so why would they not do this again? After all, it's well known that NVIDIA is a little worried about RDNA 2.0. Numerous sources have at the very least said that. And even if RDNA 2.0 isn't coming out tomorrow or next week or even next month, it's going to be out in Q4. AMD's aiming for it, and all evidence points to it doubling 5700 XT performance. If I was NVIDIA, I would say, you know what? We can just brute force with large dies on a mature node again. Samsung's 10 nanometer, actually the latest 10 nanometer, what Samsung's going to market as 8 nanometer, is much better than 16. And again, if I was NVIDIA, I would say it's better we launch with a full lineup that's much better than what we have now and in volume than risk waiting. A 2080 Ti Super wouldn't cut it. They need more than like a 10 to 20% performance boost. And so that's probably, that. that's why they would do this, just like what they did with Maxwell. However, the next question becomes this. Could they compete? Could, you know, Samsung's latest generation of 10 nanometer, what they're going to call 8 nanometer, could that even compete with TSMC's 7 nanometer? Well, let's take a look. Well, the odds are already stacked against you if you're comparing a TSMC node to a quote-unquote equivalent Samsung node. In general, TSMC's 16 nanometer was just better than Samsung's 14, and their 10 nanometer was a bit more dense and higher performing as well. And so when we look at TSMC's N7 numbers, they're basing these big performance gains on their already superior 10 nanometer that based its gains on its already superior 16 nanometer. But do note that what NVIDIA is planning to use will be marketed as 8 nanometer, and its density is actually pretty close to TSMC's. And there's a lot of information to pour through before I put together a chart, but I really just want to emphasize you just should not get bogged down in exact decimal place comparisons because what could be the performance in theory, just never turns out to be true. You know, TSMC's 10 nanometer was supposed to have a doubling of density over their own 
16 nanometer. And if you go to their website, they say that they are 7 nanometers, supposed to be 60% more dense than that. Well, that's not what we found with Radeon 7. It wasn't even half the die size of Vega 64. So all this is theoretical, and that's because there are many different constraints and factors these companies need to consider when building an architecture. You don't always want the transistors that close. You might want them farther apart so you can clock them faster, and there's so much more to consider. So I feel free to check my math of what I'm about to show, and just note that the point isn't the exact decimal places here. That's not my point. My point is to do an extremely rough estimation of what type of advantage TSMC has over Samsung, or should I say AMD has over NVIDIA by using this node. Now again, these are very rough numbers, and I base them off of TSMC's 12 nanometer because ultimately that's what Turing's coming from, and we just want to compare what is AMD's node advantage. So keep that in mind, and keep in mind this is all theoretical. Links are in the description if you want to check my numbers, but just note even if it's off by 10 20% or more, no product is exactly what these companies claim you're going to get. And also note that this, you know, 50% clock speed increase, you know, so if someone's like, why don't we have four gigahertz graphics cards? It's like, well, they add more cores and go for better efficiency. If you just went for strictly clock speed with a die shrink from TSMC 12 nanometer to 7 nanometer EUV, this is the clock speed increase you could theoretically get. So keep that in mind as well. And what we find is basically this. The density advantage for AMD, if they manage to get to 7 nanometer EUV, is huge compared to Samsung. But there are very many different nodes they could end up selecting. AMD's being vague about this on purpose. There's N7, there's actually an N7P that's about 10% better than this, and then there's 7 nanometer EU. V. And I also did some math here, you know, just kind of die shrinking Turing to eight nanometer, and then assuming they take up four times the space they used to for tensor cores and RT and all that. I actually got to a chillingly similar die size to what about the Titan RTX is. So I find that kind of funny. But again, take it with a grain of salt. Let's just say it seems like NVIDIA is probably targeting similar die sizes to what they had before with massive Turing. And again, that's probably why they'd want to go with 8 nanometer instead of 7. That's their strategy. Big dies. But anyways, let's get to the point. NVIDIA likes big dies on mature nodes, and they're going to use big dies again. All rumors point to that. And AMD is rumored to be using around something about 500-ish, maybe a little bigger millimeters squared for the 80 compute unit Navi. So with that in mind, NVIDIA might have a die size 50% bigger again. And so the question becomes this. Do I think, do I think a 50% bigger 8 nanometer card can compete with a smaller 7 nanometer P card? Of course I do. I absolutely think that just like before, NVIDIA going with a incredibly mature, outdated node can compete with AMD on a newer node. And keep in mind, if AMD doesn't use 7 nanometer EUV, N7 Plus, if they just use N7 or N7P, it's really only about a half node advantage. It's not even like a full node. Yes? N6 or N7 Plus would be a full node advantage, but this is how NVIDIA competes. They make very, very big cards on very mature nodes, and they brute force with die size. And that's because for them, it's almost a commodity. They're producing so many cards a month for the laptop and desktop and professional markets that they need to have the supply steady. They can't risk this. They can't risk having their supplies constrained. And with all these things going on with now overseas, this, this makes sense. And I guess the last thing I will say is this. I think, like I've been saying, both Ampere and Navi 2X will be competitive with each other. And I wouldn't rule out Ampere being stronger or big navi being stronger i i do think big navi can win i really do all numbers point to it being about 50 percent better than a 2080 ti or i think i came to the actual number 49 percent well rumors are saying this is 40 percent better than a 2080 ti well there you go then right i i think they're going to be competitive i think they're going to be close i think it's going to come down to 
tight competition. But either way, the competition in the high end at the very end of 2020, fingers crossed they actually launch by then and there's not more delays, will be much better than what we have now in the high end, which is basically nothing is fighting the 2080 Ti or Titan. I don't think that's going to be the situation at the end of this year. I don't think AMD is going to be able to walk away from it in milk, and I don't think NVIDIA is either. And with AMD's console advantage, I do believe NVIDIA will feel pressure to be more aggressive with pricing, and really, I'm excited for the competition. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thought I'd throw it together and throw it out there quickly to answer the real questions we can answer now. I can't say if this rumor is true, but I can say I think it makes sense if NVIDIA does this, and... I answered the question everyone's probably wondering, could this be competitive? And the answer is yes. If you liked it, please support me on Patreon. The patrons make this possible. Listen to the newest Broken Silicon. It's with someone who is a witness in Intel antitrust cases. It's actually a pretty incredible story of IP theft from Intel. And uh, yeah, share my videos. Thank you. Yeah.